Amiga test kit. An extremely useful suite of tests for the Amiga computers. I use this regularly when working on these machines for testing the various aspects that the test kit supports, be it memory, keyboard, floppy drive controller ports, audio, video, CIA and chipset or real-time clock. The one thing though that I cannot test, well that hides within F9, the serial and parallel ports and I can't test those because well up until now I don't have the required dongles. Steve from the Casual Retro Gamers Discord, yes my Discord links in the description, everyone is more than welcome. Well he recently ordered the required PCBs from the shared project section over on PCB Way. This is it here and it was these that he ordered. That's the one for the serial port. That's the one for the parallel port. And Steve has very kindly sent us two sets of the PCBs. So we need six 5mm LEDs. I'm going to use these blue ones. We need two 270 ohm resistors and four 1K resistors. Those are in there. And obviously we're going to need the connectors. Two sets of male and female. Let's just put it all together. And I'm going to start with these connectors first. So we'll do this parallel port dongle. It needs one of the male connectors. It only can go on one way. And the PCBs are just the right thickness to sort of fit in there while holding the PCB in place, well, sort of. If those were just nipped together ever so slightly, I think it would hold this a little bit better. Yeah, that's perfect. That will hold that in there for me while I solder it up. Now, I normally use leaded solder, but I think for this, I'm just going to try and use up some of this unleaded solder, this lead free stuff. I don't often use this because it is quite thick as you can see but it is going to use quite a bit of solder just uh, making off those pins there. I'll just do those opposite ends and we'll just be sure that we're happy with this. Yeah, everything is sitting nicely in place. Let's just get this done. We'll do one of the female connectors for the Amiga serial port. This one is a little tighter. So I don't need to adjust that. That's just going to hold that in there nicely as it is. But again, we'll just do the opposite corners. Then we'll double check that everything is sitting as it should be. Yeah. That all looks fine. I suppose we may as well just do both sets. We'll fit the LEDs next. The long leg of the LED, that is the positive side. And it is marked on the silk screen of these boards. We'll do the serial port boards next. If you are going to be building these, just pay close attention to the orientation of the LEDs on the serial port board. There are the two LEDs there, but they go in sort of mirror orientation to each other. The positive leg of both of them is in the middle. That's because one of them is on the negative 12 volt rail, the other is on the positive 12 volt rail. And yes, I know what you're thinking. I should have used three different colored LEDs because we're displaying five volt positive 12 and negative 12 voltage rails and with different color LEDs, I suppose it would be maybe easier 
to confirm that they're all working, but it'll either all light up or it won't. If it doesn't, we can then check which one is missing. The 270 ohm resistors, they are for the parallel port dongle and obviously just to protect the LED itself. So I think most of these LEDs here, they'll probably operate at about 3 volts. So if we just hook them up to the 5 volt reel coming out here, or more so the 12 volt reel on this one, and they would just go pop. And lastly then, it's just the 1K resistors. And that is pretty much it, other than the fact I need to fix the position of that resistor. Let me trim all these legs off, just make life a little bit easier. And to fix this one, I've just grabbed the whole thing in the vise here. And I'm going to just melt those points and just push this on through while trying not to burden myself in the process. Because it will get very hot very quickly. But that's it now. Let's get the Amiga back and test them. I don't think I have ever had anything in the serial or parallel ports on this Amiga. So you know what? A little blast of contact cleaner probably wouldn't hurt. So parallel port that is there. And serial port. Why will that not go in? Let me try the other one. Oh, that's why it won't go in. There's a bent pin in there. I've never noticed that before. How would that have happened? Because as I say, I have never had anything in these. Let me see if I can carefully bend that back out with a little flat headed screwdriver. The pointy nose pliers maybe do a better job of it because I can just grab the pin there and just sort of tweak it back into position just gently. Hopefully this will go in now. Yeah. There we are. Let's just take that back out again just to be sure yeah, okay. I was worried there that I might have, you know, pushed the pin back into the Amiga or something, but no. That's all okay. So I think when we power the machine on here, the Amiga test kit is still in the floppy drive, but I think when we power it on, all those lights should light up. And there they are. Three incredibly bright blue LEDs. But that does confirm that our 5 volt, minus 12 and positive 12 voltages are all there. Here's the real question though. In the Mega Test Kit, what do the look back tests do? Because I've never run these. We'll start with the serial test. And everything seems to be good. Lit up blue at the start there, and that was a probing, the serial port. And if any of it had it turned red, well, that would have been bad. It's all turned green though, so it's good. What about the parallel port test, F2? So again, it's probing everything, and it's all went green. So parallel and serial ports on this Amiga 1200, they're fine. I'll just quickly swap out to these other two dongles. I don't see why these would be any different, but let's just test them. Again, all three lights. F9, serial test, F1. Yeah, that's fine. Parallel test, F2. And that's fine as well. So those lookbacks, they're good. Well, that's it. A rather simple mini build. But now I can run the full test suite from Amiga Test Kit. So thank you very much, Steve. These will no doubt come in very handy in the future. In fact, I do have at least another two Amigas that require a little bit of work. As part of that, we will be running 
and make a test kit. And so yeah, those will come in handy for that. I suppose I don't really need both sets of it though. So I will offer this one, say I will offer that up to anyone on my Discord who wants it. First come, first served. Just drop me a message and I'll send it over to you. But that's it. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.